Homestead and welcome back. So this just might be my last recipe here in this kitchen. I might film a couple more here before we officially move, um, just so that I have some prepped that I can share with you while we're trying to get settled over there um, that are already filmed. But if I don't get that done, because we're leaving in 10 days, this just might be my last video here in this kitchen. And I thought I would share my gluten-free dinner rolls. So gluten-free breads can be tricky sometimes. And I have tried countless different recipes using an all-purpose gluten-free flour and they just never churn out. And I think there's a little bit of a reason for that. And that is because without the gluten that binds them together, I just think that you have to be able to create a dough that will work for bread and that's just not gonna happen with uh, a gluten-free flour. So, I have worked so hard the last couple years on making my own gluten-free breads and I think I've nailed quite a few down because I'm not using an all-purpose flour. Uh, my dinner rolls are actually the recipe um, dough for my French bread and I also sometimes use them for breadsticks. The great thing about this recipe is really you have a base recipe and then you just shape it the way that you want for whatever bread that you're using. Um, for this bread recipe, I am going to use my stand mixer with the paddle attachment. <clears throat> if you do not have a stand mixer, a hand mixer will do just fine. But as you've heard me say before in most of my videos, my stand mixer is my workhorse of my kitchen. I use it daily. And so um, making gluten-free breads, it is essential to use a hand mixer or um, a stand mixer for it to do the work for you because you're gonna, all gluten-free breads are not gonna form into a ball of dough like a regular gluten bread. They are going to be more like a cake batter that you have to work with and that's where this works really well to get it all incorporated. Okay, so what I have here that's already proofing is one fourth a cup of warm water, a fourth a teaspoon of just regular white cane sugar. Now you can use honey if you'd like, um, if you prefer and then two and one fourth a teaspoon of active dry yeast. And I already started this and have that um, going in there. And then I, the flours that I use for my um, dinner rolls, or if I was gonna make French bread, if this is the same exact recipe, I use one and a half cups of brown rice flour and one and a half cups of tapioca flour or tapioca starch. Those are the same thing. So if you find either, that's okay. Um, you can use white rice flour in this if you would like. I prefer brown rice flour and that's what I usually buy. So that's what I'm making with it today. <clears throat> I'm gonna pour, so in this bowl I have a half a, one and a half cup of brown rice flour, one and a half cup of tapioca flour. And I'm gonna get this right on into my bowl. And then I am going to add in and I, um, some xanthan gum and that's gonna be three teaspoons. Now the purpose of xanthan gum is to bind everything together. So without your gluten, you need something to hold your bread together. And so that's where this comes in. When you usually buy an all-purpose gluten-free flour, you usually, the flour has the xanthan gum already in it and that's why they call it an all-purpose flour. You can just substitute it out in a recipe for whatever flour that calls for. Um, when you're making your own gluten-free bread and you're building your flour base, you always are going to have to add in xanthan gum to keep everything together and to hold it together. Okay, and then I'm gonna do one and a half teaspoons of salt. And then I am just going to stir this up with my mixer. Now this step you could add into a bowl and stir it up yourself. Um, I just, less dishes, throw it all in here and stir it right on up. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna add is two tablespoons of just granulated white sugar. Um, I'm going to add in one and one fourth a cup of warm water and two tablespoons of melted butter. And now my proofed, as you can see, it's very foamy and bubbly yeast. Get that all in. And then I'm actually 
actually gonna take this bowl back and then you're gonna to wanna to add in three egg whites. So the whites are what's gonna make this really nice and fluffy. I can do it without making a huge mess here. If a little bit of yolk gets in, it's not the end of the world, but try and just do the whites. If you need to be egg free, um, you can try this with an egg replacer. I have never done that because we don't ever have to be egg free, um, but that is an option if you don't want to use the whites. Okay. Another option actually that you can do too if you need to be egg free is um, using a duck eggs. So those are always really good too. Okay. So then you're gonna go ahead and turn this on and let it go for a few minutes. Okay, so I let this go for about two minutes and this is kind of what you get. Is it's a really sticky, very thick cake batter consistency and that's exactly what you want. Um, so I'm gonna push all of this off and then the trick to working this dough into dinner rolls is to wet your hands. So I just get my hands nice and wet and then I take a little piece of it and I go ahead and form a dough ball, a little roll here. I don't have an exact measurement of how much I get. I would say it's about a third a cup of dough in each one. As I go and my hands get sticky and the dough starts sticking to me, I get them wet again. Now, your little rolls here are going to rise and they're gonna get really, really big. So, I have done it where I've made my balls way too big and then I have these ginormous rolls. They're delicious, but they're huge and they're um, a little bit too much for a dinner roll. So, I will make sure to try and get them as small as possible. Like I said, about a fourth to a third a cup. They don't have to be perfect. Um, but they will rise quite a bit and really get puffy. The other way that you can use this dough, which is really delicious and the girls really enjoy, is to use it to make hamburger buns. So if you wanted to make them big, you could do this same method and you can stick them in a cast iron pan like I am that's well buttered, or you can stick them on a cookie sheet and form little buns, let them rise, and those are delicious as well for gluten-free hamburger buns. Okay, and I'll keep getting my hands wet here with a little bowl and get the rest of these all done. Okay, so now I have all of my dinner rolls formed into my well-buttered cast iron pan. Now you don't have to use a cast iron pan. So if you don't have one, you can just bake them in um, any kind of baking sheet or even just like I said, on a cookie sheet. You don't need to do it in cast iron. I love doing dinner rolls in cast iron and so it just that's how I always do it. But don't feel like you need to go out and buy something just to make these dinner rolls. Okay, so now that I have them all formed, I'm gonna take just about a tablespoon of melted butter and I'm just gonna brush it over the top of each of them. This just helps to make them nice and golden brown. And then once these all have a little bit of butter on them, I am going to go ahead and stick these into my oven with the oven light on to rise. This can, depending on how cold your kitchen is, this can take anywhere from an hour to 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Um, all you're looking for is for your dinner rolls to double in size. So like I said, they're gonna get very big, they're gonna rise, and then when you bake them, they're gonna get even bigger. So um, starting with a smaller dough ball helps with them not becoming too big. So these are gonna go into the oven and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so these have rose for just about an hour. And so this is about how big they are. They're starting to touch each other on the sides. Now I set my oven for 400 degrees and I'm gonna bake these for about 15 to 25 minutes. I'm gonna watch and see how the tops get nice and golden. And as soon as they are golden, I will 
pull them out of the oven and immediately remove them from this pan and put them on a wire rack to cool. Now the difference between a regular gluten dinner roll versus a gluten-free dinner roll is that you need to let your breads cool completely, which means about two hours or more before you eat them. Um, otherwise the insides just don't set up correctly and you'll get a really gummy inside. So I'll let these completely cool and if I were to want to eat them warm, right before dinner, about 20 minutes, I'll pop them in the oven on the warm setting and just let them get warm again um, before we eat them if I'm wanting that. So I'm gonna bake them and then I'll show you what they look like afterwards. Okay, so the dinner rolls came out of the oven and I took them all out of the cast iron pan immediately and stuck them here on this wire rack. Now I will let them cool completely, um, a minimum of two hours. And then if I want them warm again for dinner time, I'll stick them back in that cast iron pan and just stick them in the oven on warm and let them warm back up. But this is the, the important part for the middle of your dinner roll to set up properly and not have a gummy product. So I hope you enjoy these dinner rolls. Take care.